Hey guys, let me set the stage here. What you're about to see is every single speaker that spoke at the Carmel Clay School Board meeting last night, July 26, 2021. They read excerpts from uh, really inappropriate books that are in uh, elementary, middle, and high school in Carmel Clay. Uh, so here is uh, every single person in all three minutes. I do have a shorter video that I posted on Facebook that I linked uh, below, but here it, are their uh, talks in their entirety. And I will warn you, I will warn you, it is really hard to sit through, which really drives home the point um, of how uh, horrifically inappropriate these books are for minors. So here we go. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the global campaign to promote sexualized material to grade school children, which is heralded by the UN, championed by Planned Parenthood, and is now making its way into the Carmel schools. This campaign began slowly and was mostly unnoticed prior to the pandemic. But that all changed as parents gained more transparency through the use of hybrid schedules and Zoom calls. At the elementary school level, this campaign has been rolled out through the introduction of books on our library shelves focused on sexual lifestyles and gender preferences. Educators claim that these books provide our teachers and staff with a variety of compassionate tools to help children as young as five understand alternative lifestyles and sexual orientation. These books include, but they're not limited to the following four titles. Phoenix Goes to School, a story about Phoenix Finch, a gender non-conforming transgender seven-year-old girl who was assigned male at birth, but identifies with she, her, her pronouns, and likes to wear dresses to school aimed at introducing transgenderism to kids in K through three at Forestdale Elementary. Introducing Teddy is another book. This picture book helps our kiddos understand that gender isn't necessarily determined by your genitals and is told through the lens of an adorable teddy bear. Again, this book is available at Forestdale Elementary. Sparkle Boy is a social justice book that encourages the acceptance and celebration of gender-creative three-year-old boys who want to wear sparkly dresses, glittery nail polish, and jewelry, much to the dismay of his older sister. This book is available at Collegewood Elementary. Finally, call me Max. Max is a transgender kindergartner who is assigned as a girl at birth, but feels that her parents are mistaken about who she really is. Fortunately for her, her teacher understands her parents' confusion and <coughs> affirms her true gender by calling her by the name that she has chosen, not by the name that she has been given. This is also available at Collegewood Elementary. These books and other, others like them promote the goals of the UN and Planned Parenthood, which include the promotion of gender confusion, the normalization and promotion of same-sex behavior, the suggestion that traditional family values promote hatred, teaching that gender roles are not innate or natural, but are learned, the suggestion that teachers and not parents know better when it comes to sexual preference and gender identification. We do not believe that it is compassionate or righteous for educators with and political activists to co-opt our schools in order to use them for social, sexual, or political agendas. As parents, we believe that our schools should refocus on teaching core subjects, not the promotion of political and sexual agendas. We, and I will conclude, we would ask that these materials be removed from our schools and the commission and the commission be set up to evaluate the type of materials that are appropriate for the inclusion in our libraries. Paige Mellon. And I'm going to share with you the book, Call Me Max. This is for a K to two. It is in our schools. And what we don't know is how many classrooms have this book available. Chapter one, when I look in the mirror, I see a boy. I see a boy with spiky brown hair. I see a boy with white skin that tans in the summer. I see a boy with one mom and one dad and two goldfish. I also see a boy who is transgender. Transgender is a long word, but it means something simple. Trans means going across, like how transportation means going from here to there. Gender 
means being a boy or a girl, or a little of both, or not feeling like a boy or a girl. When a baby is born, a grown-up says, it's a boy or it's a girl. If a brand new baby could talk, sometimes that baby might say, no, I'm not. When a baby <laughs> grows up to be transgender, it means that the grown-up who said they were a boy or a girl made a mistake. That would be the parents or the doctor. <laughs> when I was born, my mom and dad said, it's a girl. When I looked in the mirror, I saw a girl, kind of, but because I'm transgender, I wanted to see a boy. It goes on. Oh, I'm getting to the best part yet. Hold your applause to the end, please. In chapter two, it said, I had to go to the bathroom after a snack. At home, there was one bathroom for everyone to use. When I went to the store with my dad, I went into the bathroom with him. When I went into the movies with my mom, I went into the bathroom at home, or with her. But at school, I had to pick which bathroom to use. I'd like for you to see how young these children are in this story. When I went into the girl's bathroom, a girl ran out. She thought I was a boy. I didn't mean to scare her, but I liked that she thought I was a boy. I used the boys' bathroom instead, but when I came out, I saw kids giggling and pointing. I decided to hold it all day and tried not to drink too much water, no matter how thirsty I got. If you'd like to read further, you can head to one of our schools, check out the book, but this is totally inappropriate for K-2 students to be discussing this with anybody but their parents. As an informed and concerned parent, I want to take this opportunity to bring to the boards and Carmel Clay School Administration's attention the inappropriate literature choices available to students in Carmel Clay School's libraries. I will be reading from a book currently available in the Carmel High School Library to all Carmel High School students. Consider as you're listening to this text that a 14-year-old boy or girl will have access to this book with no parental oversight, no teacher oversight, and they can interpret however they want. The book is titled The Infinite, the Infinite Moment of Us by Lauren Miracle. Here's an excerpt starting on page 239. With both hands, he scooped up her breast, running his thumb over the swell of them and making her nipples even harder. They poked visibly through the sheer fabric. He dipped his fingers under the lace, sliding the fabric of the bra off her breast and anchoring it beneath so that it pushed her flesh higher. He did the same to the other breast. I like this better, he murmured, bowing his head and sucking first one nipple and then the other. She was wet. She was scared. She wanted him inside her. His fingers found, she, her fingers found his jeans. She undid the button and pulled down the zipper, drawing away the check to check his expression. Baby, he murmured, can we? She pushed down on the waist of his jeans, not sure how to get them off. Why had she never gotten his pants off of him before? He helped, and in the moonlight, she drew in her breath, boxer briefs, black and tight, muscular thighs so different from her softness, and in the front, erect and long beneath his boxers, his dick. Wow, she bit and took him in her mouth before she realized what she was doing. He moaned, and Rin moved up and down. God, baby, Charlie told her, his breath hitching. But hold on. He gently pushed her shoulders when her mouth let his dick left it. When her mouth left his dick, he made a sound. He laid her down. He slipped off her panties and he kissed her toes. He kissed her shins, her knees, her thighs. And when he, she lifted her hips, he stretched his body over hers and he eased his fingers, maybe two, inside her. With his stump, he rubbed other places. His dick was hard against her, but not in her yet. With his knees, he spread her legs. She gasped. He pushed harder, and she widened her legs. She didn't know what she was doing, but she was willing to try. Charlie did something with his fingers. She wasn't sure what, and her body acted on it. She grasped his hips and thrust harder, faster. She moved with him, and oh my God, so silky salt from his neck, in and out together, and she loved this boy. She was doing it. She was having sex with Charlie. He moved his mouth to her breast, and she didn't care if she was done because Jesus, 
He circled her nipple with his tongue before sucking and tugging. Charlie, God, Charlie, he switched to her other breast and everything. Her muscles tightened and she turned her head to the side as she rose one last time to meet him. Then she let go. Charlie pulled out of her slowly and lay beside her. Not appropriate for any child of any age. And I can tell you, I don't want my kids reading it. Um, so 11 year olds have access to this book and it is called, it's perfectly normal. Masturbation is touching or rubbing of your body's sex organs for pleasure because it feels good. One term for masturbating is playing with yourself. Some people think that masturbation is wrong or harmful, and some religions call masturbation a sin, but masturbation cannot hurt you. It doesn't result in pregnancy or get passing infections that are spread by sexual contact. contact. Many people masturbate, many don't. Whether you masturbate or not is your choice. Masturbating is perfectly normal. When people masturbate, they usually rub their sex organs with their hands or something Soft like a pillow. A girl often rubs her clitoris, a boy often rubs his penis. But the clitoris and penis are sensitive to the touch. Sexual intercourse usually begins with two people touching, caressing, kissing, and hugging each other. After a bit, a female's vagina becomes moist and slippery, her clitoris becomes hard, and the male's penis becomes erect, stiff, and larger. The female and male begin to be excited about each other. It is now possible for the male's erect penis to go inside the female's vagina. The moisture from the vagina makes it easier for the penis to go in. A female and a male may have orgasms at different times, and sometimes one person has an orgasm and the other doesn't. After an orgasm, most people feel relaxed, content, and sometimes even sleepy. And in case they don't know, there are illustrations on here um, showing how to do these things. Um, another book we have that is available at Carmel High School is called Doing It Right. So in this book, we get to talk about oral sex. Oral sex means touching someone's genitals with your mouth. Some people choose to have oral sex because it's not really sex. But make no mistake, it can put you and partner at risk for STDs. Then we have um, a little bit of, um, I guess, a glossary about low job, blue balls, coming, doggy style, and dry humping, in case our children need to know that. So my time is up. That's great. As a parent of five, I find it important to be very educated and for myself and other parents the sexual obscenities and the materials that are inside the political institutions that we call schools. I'm going to read from a book called Later Gator. You can find this in Carmel High School Public Library and the Public Library. <clears throat> What's up with you? I'm kind of wired. I just gave Doug his very first blowjob. What? It was going away present. See, since I won't see him for a week, I feel very proud of myself. Well, for sure, you can list it right up there with your other accomplishments with straight A's and honor roll, giving head. It wasn't all that fun for me, but I think he really liked it and that made me happy. But my jaw got really tired. Have you ever given Logan a blowjob? No, I don't plan to. I have odor issues. Hmm, I can see that. But I was just like, this is Doug and I love him. So I hope you don't think it's bad that I'm talking about this. I just needed someone to process it with. Like, it's a really big deal. Did you spit or swallow? 
I swallowed, but I don't think I'm going to do that next time. I'll just tell him very politely so he's not offended. I bet he'll be okay with what he's going to say. No way, in case no blowjobs for you, Missy. I don't want a blowjob. You know what I mean? Doug tried to go down on me. Geez, that sounds so dorky, but I was like, no, 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 that's okay. But why? Like you said, the whole odor thing, but in reverse, I'm blushing just talking about it. What about plain old sex? Sex, if you're embarrassed have him go down, to have him go down on you, wouldn't you be embarrassed to have sex? Yeah, you non-virgin. We're dying for details. Well, it was a wonderful night, but actually, I'm still a virgin. We didn't make it to completion. Well, he did, but it was before, you know, he squeezed it in you. Maddie, afterwards, he was like, oh crap, Zoe, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, nice way to blow your wad, Doug. Real appropriate. Did he at least finish you off, return the favor, as it were? I felt good that I made him feel good, so that's all that mattered. Did you have the big O? What's the big O? Don't play coy with me, Missy, you know. Oh. Uh, not exactly, at least I don't think so, but lots of girls don't have that their first time from what I read, but did he have the big O? Well, yeah, guys always do. And it goes on and on, and it's pure disgust. Um, Hypersexualization seems to be normalizing sexual activity for young people. Movies require ratings and parent ap approval to be in these movies with them, but the schools don't protect our children in the same way. been a Carmel resident for 35 years. I'm here on behalf of my children, grandchildren, and all the children in Carmel Play Schools. The book I'm holding was borrowed from the, Car from the high school section of CCPL. It's entitled Crank, which I learned is a slang term for meth. I am not a prude, but I am concerned about the availability of a book like this to 14 and 17 year olds without parental permission or knowledge. I'm going to read an excerpt which I've copied under this sheet to avoid flipping through the book. I assure you, these are verbatim quotes. The protagonist is Brie, and what I'm about to read is her second date with Brendan. The narrator is Brie. Here I will, be I will begin to quote the book, beginning on page 339. We carried a blanket into the trees. He pulled out a bundle and a six-pack of beer. For the next 20 minutes, we snorted and drank, climbing to a very tall buzz. We talked and joked and giggled, and it all seemed just like it should, until it didn't anymore. Crank revved, pistons firing full bore, passion firecrackered in tiny bursts from thigh to belly button. Oh, baby, I want you so bad. My shirt tore open. Wait. I've waited for weeks. Put up and shut up. <gasps> Kisses segued into bites. Bruises. Pain ripped through my body. Brandon, what? please stop. No, you promised you. Damn little tease. Off came my shorts, down went his zipper. I realized I was in serious trouble. I'll, I'll scream. Go ahead. No one can hear but skunks and coyotes. Still, as I opened my mouth, his hand slapped down over it. Just relax. You'll love it. My brand new Victoria's Secret shredded, and I felt Brendan pause, savoring my terror. They all love it. I froze as he pushed inside. Oh, there it is. Oh God, there it goes. It went all right with an audible tear. Pain mushroomed into agony and all I could do was go stiff. You weren't lying, you bitch. I lay there sobbing as he worked and sweated over me. Stoked by the crank, it took him a long time to finish. Well, give me a line, baby, I'll give you an encore. He pulled away, sticky and bloody. Throbbing inside and out, I didn't move didn't dare look him in the eye. Brendan didn't say a word most of the way home. Finally, he found a few words. I will remember them forever. If I didn't know we were just gonna lay there, I wouldn't have bothered. Carmel Clay Schools leadership has proclaimed victory over the last school year as seen through several recent school board approvals. 
CCS administrators, not teachers, will receive a 4.5% salary increase this school year and again next school year. Two, a COVID stipend was given to most, if not all, CCS employees and several non-employees with a price tag of millions of dollars. Today, they are voting on the superintendent's new five-year contract with a nice increase and loads of benefits. Did they not learn with the last superintendent and his five-year contract? How, did that, how much did that cost taxpayers? As parents in the community, how do we know if CCS leadership is actually performing? Fortunately, through iLearn testing administered by the state, student academic proficiency and district performance is measured and published. Looking at the cumulative results provides visibility into the effectiveness of teaching state academic standards. For the sake of time, I will only address Carmel's English and math scores, grades three through eight. The results are literally a failure at 56.2% student proficiency in F by Carmel grading standards. Comparatively speaking, 2019 results were only slightly better at 66.7% at proficiency a D by Carmel grading standards. Overall, I learned performance for CCS was unacceptable in all categories. I encourage everyone to visit the IDOE website to look for the comprehensive results. I learned results for many Indiana schools were poor, but COVID and the off year is no excuse. Carmel has every resource available to support our children's academic achievement. Therefore, based on the data from 2019 and 2021, we can determine that curriculum and instruction do not align with our children's needs to achieve Indiana's academic standards. CCS leadership is failing our children. The following action steps must be taken immediately. The first CCS guiding principle must be academic excellence, period. Your job is to educate. <laughs> promote programs that foster parent-teacher relationships, including in-person meetings, transparency with curriculum, and parent volunteers back in schools. Yeah. We for the immediate resignation or termination of our assistant superintendent of curriculum. She has failed our students and must be held accountable. The board and the superintendent are on notice. You have lost sight of your responsibilities to educate our children. Parents are learning, watching, and taking action.